Good morning. I am Jeanette Gibbs, Senior Vice President for Ambulatory Services for Penn State Health. Back in January, I was given the honor to lead a team to establish and operate community vaccination pop-up, community vaccination sites and pop-up clinics across the, our region. I'd like to welcome everyone to Penn State Health Dauphin County Community Vaccination Site. We just had the privilege to, of giving Governor Tom Wolf, Acting Secretary Allison Beam, and Acting Physician General Dr. Denise Johnson and their team a tour of our clinic. We're, great, we're deeply grateful for, to Governor Wolf and his leadership within the State Department of Health. They have been steady, supportive partners of us in caring for COVID patients, preventing the spread of this virus, and now in vaccinating our communities. We opened this Penn State Health Community vaccination site, as well as companion clinics in Reading, Camp Hill, and State College back in February. Since that time, we have vaccinated more than 75,000 people at these community sites. We're also a partner in a large multi-health system clinic in Lancaster, similar to this one, the one that Governor Wolf visited a few weeks ago. That clinic has also vaccinated another 80,000 people. That's on top of nearly 2,000 community health providers and nearly 20,000 Penn State Health and Penn State College of Medicine employees, volunteers, and students. All told, we have vaccinated nearly 80% of our people. I'm particularly proud of our efforts to reach underserved and vulnerable populations. Even before COVID hit our nation and our world, we knew that certain populations struggled with access to health care. We know some communities are more susceptible to poor health outcomes because of health disparities and socioeconomic conditions. Research has shown that this zip code plays a critical role in our life expectancy. To reach underserved and vulnerable populations who might not otherwise have access to the vaccine, Penn State Health has partnered with community organizations, including the NAACP, the Area Agencies on Aging, Lebanon Family Health Services, and Latino Connection Incorporated to take this vaccine into churches and community centers and health clinics. I was just with Acting Secretary Beam on Monday at the Beacon Clinic in Harrisburg to kick off the Kate COVID-19 Mobile Vaccination Unit. We are grateful for the support of our partners in this endeavor. We've had actually about 15 of what we are calling pop-up clinics in places like Inner City Lebanon, Lancaster, Reading, and Harrisburg, as well as rural communities like New, Bloom, New Bloom, Bloomfield and Perry County. We have many more planned in the coming weeks and through these clinics, we have nearly reached 2,500 people. We appreciate the many employees and volunteers who have organized, promoted, and staffed all of our vaccine clinics. Ultimately, we are all working together for one goal, to ensure anyone who wants to be vaccinated against COVID-19 can be. At this time, I am delighted to introduce Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Um, thank you, Jeanette. And, and I just, uh, we have Secretary of Health Beam here and also our Physician General, Denise Johnson, and Dr. Bill Curry. You'll hear from a number of them in, in, in just a minute, but thank you for being here. You know, we're trying to social distance here. Do you wanna, we, you're far enough apart. Make sure you're, okay, all right. But I, uh, thanks again, Jeanette, for that introduction. Uh, and, and she's right, I just uh, toured the facility here uh, and it, it makes me really proud, but I think all of us in Pennsylvania owe a great debt of gratitude to the folks who, who do this. Um, I love visiting these vaccination sites. Uh, this, this, what, what goes on here is really, really important. Um, and, and I love talking to the frontline heroes who actually make this kind of a site work. 
Um, and also the individuals who are getting the shots, they're heroes too, because they're helping to make all of us safe. They're making themselves safe, obviously, by getting the vaccine, but they're helping to make everybody in Pennsylvania safe. The more people who get vaccine, vaccinated, the safer all of us are going to be and the sooner we can get out of this. COVID-19 has been a problem for all of us over the past year, 13 months. But now we have a way to fight back and these vaccines are the way we can fight back and actually move on to the life that, that we'd like it to be. I've often said, talked about, and not just me, but all of us talk about how vaccines are the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, that light is here and, and that light is getting closer and closer every day. Um, I mean, the mitigation efforts are important. Uh, they made a difference during the, the pandemic, but right now, this is the key to our future, these, these vaccines. And getting back to life as normal as it can possibly be, these vaccines are, are the key. With every dose of vaccine we put into arms, the entire Commonwealth gets a little bit closer to that new normal, and that's really important. We still have a lot to do. We still have a ways to go. But Pennsylvania is really making great progress in the vaccine rollout. Uh, as you know, Pennsylvania ranks in the top 15 in today's New York Times report. We were actually 10th uh, on the first dose list, the percentage of first doses. Uh, we're actually first on first doses, the percentage of the population with first doses. Uh, first of the 10 largest states in, in the country. We're second uh, to New York only on, on the second doses. Um, and the Becker ranking has us at 22nd as of yesterday. They, they come out about 10 o'clock, I think, every day. So we, we don't have, I don't have their, their ranking. I should have it. If you look at Becker, you can get it. I don't have it at this point, but, but we were 22nd yesterday. Uh, but if you look at it, over 40% of the Pennsylvania population has gotten at least one, vac one dose of the vaccine. That's one in every five Pennsylvania. Actually, it's more than that. 40% is almost one in every two and a half uh, of population. One, of it, one in every five uh, has gotten uh, the second dose. Uh, I think we're 23 or 24%. So this is great progress, but we can't afford to take our foot off the gas pedal. And that's why as supply has increased and appointments become more available, I mean, there are openings here. If you walk in today, you can get a, you can get a vaccine. Um, we uh, uh, really need to keep keep moving, but that's basically why Pennsylvania has moved up. You know, initially we were talking about maybe everybody would be eligible by the end of April. Then it was by April 19th, and last week we moved it up to to uh, uh, this Monday, past Monday. So uh, this is this is really important. So I know some of us, including me, have been waking, waiting. We didn't want to butt in line to make an appointment. But right now, what we need is for as many Pennsylvanians as possible to get the vaccine. I'm actually getting my first dose on Monday. So that's, that's uh, uh, my, my job. So don't wait. Talk to a vaccine provider and book your appointment today. Uh, these vaccines are both safe, they're effective, and the stories of millions of people in Pennsylvania who have gotten the vaccine alone that attest to that. Now, I know the recent Johnson & Johnson pause has actually uh, uh, created some, some questions, but it, I, I think what it really does is should give us a reason to, to be more confident that these vaccines are safe. There have been almost 7 million vaccines, Johnson & Johnson, that have been given out in this country, and there are six cases, six out of almost 7 million, 6.8 million of a rare disease that I'm not sure anybody, I'm not a medical professional, but I'm not sure we even know that it's connected to the, uh, how, how much it's connected to the, to the vaccination. Um, the scientists are working on that and they're watching these vaccines and watching the vaccine rollouts very carefully. And I think that should give us all the kind of confidence that, that we need. Uh, more information about vaccine safety is going to be coming every day. Uh, more trials, uh, uh, the extensive trials that all of these vaccines went through and continue to go through. Um, I think, you know, the, what we're doing right now and what's happening with the vaccine should give us all comfort. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to the website, the Pennsylvania Department of Health website, which is health.pa.gov. Uh, or the, the Centers for Disease Control. They also have a, a good website if you want to find out more about what's going on at any point in time. Um, but as the rollout continues, we want to ensure that all Pennsylvanians have access to the vaccine because the more people get vaccinated, again, that's going to make us all safer. So thank you. And now I'm going to turn this over to Secretary of Health, Pennsylvania Secretary of Health, Allison Bean.
Good morning. I am thrilled to be here at Penn State Health this morning. Um, it's always an honor to be at these vaccine clinics where folks um, really are having the COVID-19 vaccines get into the arms of Pennsylvanians. So April is a critical month in where we are with the pandemic and the rollout. Um, as a, the governor had indicated, as of Tuesday, every Pennsylvanian 16 and older is now eligible to go schedule that appointment to get vaccinated. We have a steady supply of vaccine coming into the Commonwealth for those who want it. And so we really do want to encourage folks to get vaccinated, get that appointment scheduled and get vaccinated as quickly as possible. The Department of Health just yesterday issued data on our website that evidenced that even within our skilled nursing facilities staff, the folks that have been our frontline heroes throughout this pandemic, there was an uptake on average of 53% of that workforce actually getting vaccinated when it became accessible to them. While that's better than the national median of 37% of skilled nursing facility staff, that evidence is how far we have to go and how much of a challenge overcoming this vaccine hesitancy will be in the near future. And so we need your help and we look forward to working with you to have Pennsylvanians overcome that hesitancy and any of that skepticism and get that appointment scheduled. And so with that, I just wanna thank you all for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you to Penn State Health for all of the heroes inside that are getting vaccinated. And it's my privilege to now introduce Dr. Curry to speak a bit more from Penn State. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. William Curry. I'm a physician in our Department of Family Community Medicine here at, at Penn State Hershey. I want to talk this morning about how important it is to get vaccinated and about vaccine safety and effectiveness. We know the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been in the headlines these past several days. What people are reading and hearing may cause them some hesitation to get a vaccine. And I want to ensure you that vaccines are safe. We know that there are reported blood clot issues caused by an immune mechanism in six women out of almost 7 million people that have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This is an extremely low number. At this time, we do not know for certain that those blood clots were caused by the vaccine, but the FDA and the CDC recommending a pause in distribution it's a reassurance that the safety of Americans is being considered very seriously. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccinations, they are a different type of vaccine. They are made from a different technology and they have been shown to be safe and effective after nearly 190 million doses given. There have been no cases of immune-based blood clotting complications that have been seen in these six women with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The risk of getting ill with COVID is greater than the risk of potential side effects that come with the inoculation. Many more people will suffer the complications of blood clots associated with having a COVID infection than we'll, we will see with vaccine administration. Getting vaccinated is critically important. It is the best way to protect ourselves protect our loved ones from getting ill or dying from COVID. Vaccination is the best way to halt this pandemic. We hear a lot about how people die from COVID. The numbers are far too high. But one thing that we need to remember is that while there are a lot of people who have survived COVID, there's a large number of these people who continue to leave, live with life altering issues. Many people who have survived COVID continue to li live with heart issues, neurologic issues, breathing issues. Many people become what we call the long haulers, people who continue to suffer with COVID complications for weeks and months. A person not getting vaccinated puts not only themselves at risk, but their loved ones to the possibility of getting COVID and suffering long-term effects or even death. I urge everyone my family, my friends, 
the patients I serve and those in our communities to get vaccinated as soon as they are able. Penn State Health is happy to help you get vaccinated. You can register today to sign up for an appointment at this clinic or one of our other clinics throughout central Pennsylvania. With that, I welcome Governor Wolf back to the podium. Thanks, Dr. Curry. Okay, any questions? Yes. I was at a vaccine clinic yesterday in Lebanon County, and they said there are hundreds of appointments going unfilled. What is your worry about wasted vaccine with people not showing up or not signing up in the state? And number two is a follow-up. Do you know what vaccine you're getting? I don't know what vaccine I'm getting, so thank you for asking. Um, but, uh, Allison, why not ask you to do the, the as far as we know, and, and we, we track this, the, the uh, wasted vaccine issue is, it's, it's, there isn't much going on. What is an issue, and have, it's here, is that there are open, there are, as you point out, open appointments right now. Now, think back a week ago. You know, everybody said, we can't get enough vaccine. Now, now, we, now we have too much vaccine, apparently. So uh, the, the, it was one of the things that, that led to our decision to move the eligibility forward. But I don't think waste is, is the issue. It's, it's making sure, and I said, as Secretary Bean talked about, the hesitancy issue. You want to weigh in on this? Sure. So the crux of the question is really um, those appointments give us pause because of hesitancy. I think to the waste issue, we've talked a lot to our provider community, and they actually have logistics operations set up that they are really thawing out proportionate to what their appointments are. And so we're not seeing an uptick in waste. The appointment availability does give us cause for concern, though, because that's indicative of the hesitancy, which really is the challenge to come. Speaking to the issue of waste, um, one of the things that, that we do and many other vaccination clinics do is they have a list of individuals who have not been able to get on the schedule list, but they, they have made it known that they will be here if they make a phone call to them. And so we will never close a session without going through that list of individuals who want the vaccine but haven't been on the schedule. And we do that quite well. There was one day um, a few weeks ago where there were several extra doses that were drawn up and we made calls, 24 people got in here. We, we, we delayed the closing of the clinic until they could get here and get their immunization. So we don't waste it. We have people that are willing to come. So I think that's really important. Yes, um, I, I was curious, are you, I, I realize that it's only been a couple days since the vaccine has been available to the general populace, but um, in your study of the dynamics, um, are, you, are you seeing any signs that lead you to believe that there really is a, a large group of the population that is hesitant? I mean, um, you know, I, I think right now there's probably way more appointments available than there ever, ever have been because of the scaling up. but. Yeah. But um, even with the, the news of the Johnson & Johnson, have you seen anything that actually gives you any data points that, that point to an uptick in this, in, or, or at least some, some real uh, empirical proof that there is he hesitancy? I, th I think it's too early to say that statistically the, the Johnson & Johnson pause is causing any uh, increase in hesitancy. But hesitancy was an issue that, that we've been uh, uh, looking at right from day one. It was, it was covered. Uh, by the fact that the supply wasn't up to demand. So uh, the, uh, the, the theme uh, for the first three months of, of the, the vaccine rollout was there's just not enough supply. Uh, and so the hesitancy, hesitancy issue didn't really rear its ugly head, I think, except maybe in, in some of the, we had some concerns in like nursing homes, the professionals, uh, like the Secretary Beam said, 57%. Uh, but. Uh, we know that, that that is going to be an issue, and, and the vaccine task force has been, we, we have been talking about that, that, that uh, you know, we weren't sure when it was going to happen. I think in some places it's happened maybe sooner, uh, but you're starting to hear advertisements in places like New Jersey uh, where it's saying, okay, go out and get your vaccine. Well, three weeks ago there were no <laughs> ads saying go out and get your vaccine because everybody who wanted a vaccine, you know, they were lining up. So hesitancy is, is something that we have known for a long time is going to be there. 
I don't think we have any good statistical information about whether the specific Johnson & Johnson, it actually might actually reduce, as I say, in my, my mind, I'm more confident than ever that the FDA is actually on this. So it might actually reduce hesitancy. But, but um, uh, the, the, the idea that, that there is an issue of hesitancy has been with us right from the beginning. Allison, do you want to add anything to that? Okay. Charlie. Also, on, on the Johnson & Johnson thing, I, I think the latest news on that is that um, it's probably going to be paused at least for another week or so. I think the next meeting on that is the 23rd. And I was just wondering, does that cause any complications for Pennsylvania? I, I've been reading about some in some other states where they have geared the Johnson & Johnson for um, the most vulnerable populations, like the homeless um, college students. Um, that. People, people where they they might have trouble tracking to find a, to get a, an appointment uh, certain for a second shot, that um, some states are worried about that. I know in Pennsylvania the emphasis with the Johnson and Johnson, the one big public emphasis was the teachers, and that's, uh, got, that's we're finished with that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was just wondering, um, are there other uh, marginalized or underserved populations that you're worried about hitting if if you have to uh, keep Johnson and Johnson on the shelf for a while? I don't. I don't think so. The the uh, uh, as you pointed out, the, the teachers, and then we also did uh, frontline uh, essential workers like food, uh, food processing, agricultural workers. Uh, but all that happened before the the uh, the pause. Uh, the other thing is that that aside from the last week in March, the the allocation and and the first week in March, I guess, uh, the allocation of Johnson and Johnson has been. Moderna and Pfizer has been fairly steady, I mean, steadily increasing. Johnson & Johnson has fluctuated uh, a, a lot, and the last couple of weeks there, hasn't, there wasn't that much coming to Pennsylvania anyway, directly to the state. There was some coming through the, the pharmacy partnership, but uh, we didn't control that. So, so it hasn't been a big factor, I don't think. Allison? So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine following the teacher and the child care workers were dedicated to a mission to um, work on making sure some of our frontline employees got vaccinated as quickly as possible. That not only was in the food and agricultural industry like the governor had mentioned, but also making sure that we were able to work through our corrections officers and our corrections facilities. Um, what we've done is prudently paused that until that Friday meeting is taking place, but we're already building contingency plans. So if there is an extended pause on Johnson & Johnson, how we're going to be able to still fulfill that obligation and that commitment to those populations, but using the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. And so where we have put any sort of allocation towards those specific missions, we will fulfill our commitment. It might require us to shift a little bit in our planning, but we're going to be able to pause right now, really follow the federal guidance and wait and see what Friday says, and then we'll make, we'll adjust accordingly. Secretary, if I can follow up on that, are, are there, so are there any groups, um, be it prison inmates or corrections officers or a any groups that have actually seen a dedicated vaccination program that have been put on pause? Correct. The corrections officers um, and actually those that are the incarcerated individuals in corrections facilities is on pause right now. Um, likewise, through our Department of Human Services, we had specific initiatives to reach some of their facilities as well. And then also some of our food and agricultural worker populations are on pause. And so we're doing the prudent thing by following the federal guidance and really aligning with what a SIPS committee meeting schedule is going to allow for us. And so once we learn more next Friday, we'll pivot accordingly, but we're already working on our contingency plans to make sure we're ready to do that. In regards to uh, addressing hesitation, looking at young people, I know that we open eligibility to 16 and over right now. With that demographic, is there, do we right now have data on how many people have taken advantage of the shot? And then the second part of that question, is there going to be an, a, a specific address to get young people who may be yeah. more reluctant to get the shot because they are quote unquote healthy? You know, uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. The, the first, the, the answer to the first question, we don't at this point know uh, what's happening with, with the younger population. They were eligible as of three days ago, so it's too early to tell. Uh, but we have been talking for <clears throat> at least a week now in the vaccine task forces to help, maybe even longer than that, how we, how we reach this group, because that's where the, the uptick in COVID cases is, is happening. Uh, and so I think there's some, some really good ideas, and I think we'll have a program in the next few days uh, as to, to how we want to do this. Again, it's complicated a little bit. It would have been easier with a one-dose vaccine. 
but I think we can do some, some things. We've been talking with folks in Washington to see if maybe we can partner with the federal pharmacy partners to, to help with this regard in terms of the second dose. So I, we, we haven't fi finally come to one, uh, you know, uh, program that, that or policy that we want to pr pursue with the, the younger generation, but but I think they're uh, it's coming, and, and I think we have some good ideas. I think yes, Governor. Um, thanks again for the time. Uh, can you tell us any more about your vaccination on Monday? Will you do it privately, or are you thinking about having it public to set an example uh, for folks? And two, are you thinking of launching a campaign to get people vaccinated, like mass campaigns that we've seen? Well, I, I mean, we, we, we're we in the middle of a campaign to get people. I'm, I encourage anyone to get a vaccine. I waited because I didn't want to butt in line. Uh, and I'm going to be doing it in York at a federally qualified health center. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I, I don't even know what the time, time is that I, that I have the appointment. But uh, uh, it, it's I, I think they probably have rules about privacy inside the, the building, but I don't care. So I'm, I'm doing it on Monday. And just a quick follow up. Are you thinking at all about having maybe more vaccine clinics that um, you don't have to have an appointment? I yeah, think there's yeah. one in Pittsburgh where people can just go up now uh, to get it, that that might help. I, I think actually more more of these than you know are, have been operating like that. Uh, I know even, even our local uh, drugstore uh, uh, pharmacy has, has been, if, if they have vaccines left over, just like Dr. Curry said here, they have vaccines left over, they make every every effort to to call people. So it's not just walk in, but they actually go out and say, come on in and, and, and get your shot. But I think today here, if somebody walks in uh, right now, they do have open slots. And I see, we'll, I'm sure we'll see more and more of that. Yes. Uh, in terms of, you know, you're talking about a uh, public campaign like you're doing right now. Um, have you thought about who the message needs to come from? Obviously, yes. there are some people who, you know, if you say you're going to get it, they're still not going to listen to you. What what uh, ways are you um, reaching out to the community uh, to get the message out there? We, we were actually just talking about that. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, that's that is the crux of the, the question. What what is the best way to reach out? I mean, you you, th you think about all kinds of famous people who, but but actually, it turns out probably the best people are, are the, your next door neighbor uh, or your mother. Um, but Dr. Johnson. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, the, we found out from um, listening to our stakeholders and listening to the public that uh, the messenger is as, a, as important as the message. And so for our PA Unites Against COVID campaign, we're looking at who to take the message to the different groups. We've um, also found out that some people want to hear the message um, from someone who looks like them someone wants to hear the message from someone who speaks their language. So our outreach is going to be very broad and um, cover all of those areas. And so we're utilizing all of our partners to take the message um, out for vaccination. Thanks. Apparently not everybody wants to hear it from a bald headed uh, governor of Pennsylvania. Charlie, you've already had three questions. This is, are you uh, sure? You're, uh, this, this will be a, well, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned um, a public advertising campaign, a public media campaign in New Jersey. I, maybe there's something like that going on in Pennsylvania that I've missed, but if, if not, are you thinking about doing that oh, with yeah. the message of the vaccination? Yes. Where we, we see television we, commercials? We are. I mean, Denise, maybe Dr. Johnson can, can talk. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that was last night? Yes, so um, we are again partnering with um, everyone to take the message out. Um, I understand last night at the uh, Penns game, the stadium was all, all decked out in PA United against COVID. Um, so we do have a media campaign that's coming out. It's going to be coming out in print and digital. Um, it's going to be on social media and it's going to be starting in this month. Um, so we are trying to get the message out. We also have a lot of uh, resources available on our website. So we've got social media filters. We've got stickers that people can share. Um, so a lot of information coming out in the media um, on this campaign. Yeah, this will be the last question. In regards to delivering the message, um, I think that's an important topic. Is there any effort being done to those who may have disabilities, either the hearing impaired yeah. or, or the blind? Are there going to be well, the communication efforts there? 
Yeah, we, uh, th that's a great point. We, we uh, have, and I've said this a number of times, we, we recognize that there are at least three different channels. One, one sort of like this where you can drive in and, and get the vaccine or the pharmacies and providers where, where you're basically responsible. We're also setting up mass vaccination places and stadia so that, that, that uh, people uh, uh, can, can get the vaccine. But, but then it leaves people who are shut in, people who are disabled, uh, people who can't get out. Uh, and that's where our mobile sites come in. We, we, we need to do more and more things like that. And I think we're, we're looking to, to see what, what is working uh, all around the country in that regard. But we know that's, that's, uh, that's an issue. I think we've had some success, but we still have a lot of work to do. Anybody want to add in? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and, and get your vaccines. Thanks very much.